The process of using information stored in DNA to make protein is known as protein synthesis or gene expression. This process involves two major steps, transcription and translation. During transcription, the DNA molecule is used as a template to create an mRNA, messenger RNA molecule. The enzyme RNA polymerase binds to a specific region of the DNA called the promoter and unwinds the double helix to expose the nucleotide bases. The RNA polymerase then reads the sequence of the DNA bases and uses complementary RNA nucleotides to build a strand of mRNA. The mRNA molecule then travels out of the nucleus and into the cytoplasm, where it binds to a ribosome. During translation, the ribosome reads the sequence of the mRNA in groups of three nucleotides called codons. Each codon corresponds to a specific amino acid. The ribosome then reads the sequence of codons and uses transfer RNA trina, molecules to bring the corresponding amino acids to the ribosome, where they are joined together in the correct order to form a protein. The sequence of nucleotides in the DNA determines the sequence of amino acids in the protein. There are 20 different amino acids that can be used to build proteins, and the specific order of these amino acids determines the shape and function of the protein. So, the information stored in DNA is used to create a specific sequence of amino acids, which then fold into a three-dimensional structure to form a functional protein. Here are some interesting trivia about DNA, RNA, and protein synthesis. 1. DNA is short for deoxyribonucleic acid, and it contains the genetic information that determines the traits of an organism. 2. RNA is short for ribonucleic acid, and it is involved in the process of protein synthesis. 3. DNA is composed of four nitrogenous bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine, while RNA has uracil instead of thymine. 4. The process of copying DNA into RNA is called transcription, while the process of using RNA to synthesize proteins is called translation. 5. The genetic code is the set of instructions that tells the cell how to read the genetic information stored in DNA. 5. It is composed of codons, which are sequences of three nucleotides that code for specific amino acids. 6. Mutations in DNA can lead to changes in the amino acid sequence of proteins, which can affect their function. 7. The central dogma of molecular biology states that DNA is transcribed into RNA, which is then translated into proteins. 8. DNA replication occurs before cell division, and it ensures that each new cell receives a complete set of genetic information. 9. The shape of DNA is a double helix, while the shape of RNA is usually single-stranded. 10. The process of protein synthesis involves the ribosome, a complex molecular machine that reads the instructions encoded in mRNA and assembles the corresponding amino acids into a polypeptide chain. There are several ways that changes in the DNA molecule can affect its product. Substitution, a single nucleotide may be replaced with a different one. For example, the nucleotide A may be replaced with G. This change is called a point mutation, and it can lead to a different amino acid being incorporated into the protein. This can alter the protein's structure and function. Insertion, an extra nucleotide may be added to the DNA sequence. This can shift the reading frame of the gene, causing all the subsequent amino acids to be changed. This can result in a non-functional protein. Deletion, a nucleotide may be deleted from the DNA sequence. This can also shift the reading frame of the gene, leading to a different amino acid sequence and potentially a non-functional protein. Duplication, a portion of the DNA sequence may be duplicated, resulting in extra copies of the gene. This can lead to overproduction of the protein, which can have negative consequences. 
Inversion, a segment of the DNA may be inverted or flipped around. This can change the order of the nucleotides and thus the sequence of amino acids in the protein. All of these changes can alter the protein product, which may affect its structure, function, and interactions with other molecules in the cell. In some cases, the changes may be harmless, but in other cases, they may lead to disease or other negative consequences. Here are some additional trivia about mutations and heredity. Mutations can occur spontaneously or be caused by external factors, such as radiation, chemicals, or viruses. Not all mutations are harmful or detrimental. In fact, some mutations can be beneficial and provide an advantage in certain environments. Mutations can occur in any part of the DNA molecule, including the coding regions, non-coding regions, and regulatory regions. Some mutations can be repaired by the cell's DNA repair mechanisms, while others may persist and be passed on to offspring. The rate of mutation varies depending on the organism and the DNA sequence. For example, the rate of mutation is higher in bacteria than in humans. Some genetic disorders, such as Huntington's disease, are caused by dominant mutations. Meaning that an affected individual only needs one copy of the mutated gene to develop the disorder. Other genetic disorders, such as cystic fibrosis, are caused by recessive mutations. Meaning that an individual must inherit two copies of the mutated gene, one from each parent, to develop the disorder. Genetic counseling and testing can help individuals and families understand their risk of passing on genetic disorders to offspring and make informed decisions about family planning. Epigenetic modifications, which can affect gene expression without changing the DNA sequence, can also be heritable and influence the traits and health of offspring. Advances in genome sequencing and gene editing technologies are providing new opportunities to study and treat genetic disorders.